Dr. Kasha Kynes, welcome to Women's Wellness Radio. Happy to be here. Delighted. Thank you for having me here. I'm delighted to have you. I'm always excited when I get to pick uh, someone's brain on a topic that affects my own health. <laughs> So yeah. I have chronic oh, yeah. EBV and I've been, you know, studying I, it and you learning. Do. And, yeah. So uh-huh. that's why I was posting about it and someone said, Oh, you've got to meet Kasha. She, I see so, that's how I have Yeah, it. it's great because I had not heard of you and you teach a, a practitioner program about Epstein Barr virus. Mm-hmm. Tell us what else you do. What else do I do? Um I'm a clinician, so I'm in the trenches with my patients. And so uh, uh, on holidays, weekends, evenings, I've been writing the book on it. So it's almost ready. Oh, it should great. be in print, probably May, June. And, um, and so in the meantime, I've been teaching clinicians as well. Uh, we're building an ebdhelp.com website, which is almost, almost done. It should be done in April. That's so, great. Good um, timing. Yeah, we've been really, really busy. There's a lot to be done and people are ill and, you know, there's huge needs to provide information because um, I was just sick and tired of (laughs) hearing the wrong information from the poor people that are reaching out to doctors and clinicians and and getting a, a, you know, a go around. Um, It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. And so I made sure that the book has... uh, a part that is just clinically validated. Everything is for them to understand that this is real, there are solutions. And then the other part of the book is kind of a manual of what you do with it and why. So there's a lot of the food-oriented um, um, applications, lifestyle, stress management, but also very specific supplements. There's a lot of them to pick from. So it's a Right now, it's 522 pages. <laughs> Let's see wow. where it goes. It's a lot. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a labor of love, but it's really, it's needed. It needs to, it needs to be out there, yes. Yeah. Yes. So how did, you get, how did you get so deep into this, this topic? <clears throat> um, divine intervention and <laughs> just doing what you do in functional nutrition. Um, the more you work, the more you specialize, the, the more complicated patients you get. And at a certain point, a few years ago, I would hit the wall and we would be doing everything right and there would be something I didn't say and I didn't know. Mm. And viruses really, you know, I went to the best schools. I went to Bastyr. I, I, I did the doctoral program and it's only in the doctoral program when I was lucky enough to have Dr. Vasquez who had a whole virology um, research in depth. So, and got me started. And then uh, uh, a couple of my, of my patients recommended that I read uh, Medical Medium. And so I, you know, I, I don't have time to read unless I really have to. So I picked up the book and I, I read it on a plane trip to a conference. <laughs> and I couldn't stop reading because it was like, what, you know, how is it that I didn't know about this? That was before Dr. Vasquez. What, what, what is going on with this? And then I could, I could think of a number of my patients when we hit the wall. It's like, oh my gosh, she had antibodies to EBV. I remember now, but it really wasn't relevant and I wouldn't know what to do with it. There's no training ever. Nowhere. There's no training. No, yeah, I agree. I think, I mean, yours is the first one that I've heard about. So, and this is Dr. Alex Vasquez. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think I mean, I've looked up some of his books, but I haven't purchased Yeah. Them this yet. one is 1200 pages. It's so heavy that it's hard to read it in bed. <laughs> it's so heavy, but there are probably 500 pages just in virology and it's not focused on EBD. Um, I, I think, I think medical medium did a wonderful job. Anthony William did a wonderful job opening the door to globally to the public where now what happens is people are reading, making connections, going back to their doctors and asking to be tested. And this is where there is this. And then there's a problem because they say, there's nothing. You had it a long time ago. (laughs) Everybody has it. Antibodies are irrelevant. You had it in the past and there's nothing. And anyway, even if you had it, there's nothing you can do about it. That's, you know, bottom line. Or maybe we can give you uh, antiviral medication or maybe there's a, you know, there's a 
the medical community and researchers are looking towards a global vaccination. All right, that would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> hmm. But the point is, yeah, most of us have the virus. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, according to research, we have, I think, eight of them, the varieties of EBV uh, identified, and Anthony talks about 64 or so, and there's different virulence. They're, they're, they, they affect different people differently, and um, I, can't, I can't verify it. I, I think my job was to... Um, because there is, there is Anthony Williams on, on a, a, an extreme, extreme end of the spectrum, and then there's medical community on the extreme uh, end of spectrum, and there's a huge divide, and there's millions of people screaming in pain here, mm. and, they're, mm. and they're not getting help. So my, my point and my job from the very beginning was, let's start with the medical literature review and see what I can validate. If, if he was making claims about certain things, and they made sense to me from my clinical experience. It's like, absolutely makes sense. I've been already doing this, but you know, things, things that were very relevant. Let me see if I can actually dig around and see if I can pull out some research. And I was in many cases. And so that was the literature review. That was the foundation. That's why I call it in the book, is the foundation. This is the part of the book where any person can take you to the doctor. You know, here, this is what we have in medical literature. There's tons. You know, and so I need to be that bridge. So now it's just a matter of getting the information in the right hands, other than, other than saying there's no information. It's all in your head. I mean, I hear these things. Stop chasing after EBV. Here's a psychiatrist that I want to recommend. And I, I, I've had people who went to psychiatrists and, and did all they could to feel better and tried different medications, but it was like, you know, you're, you've, you're, you're barking on the wrong tree. So. So I really want to make sure that there's enough tools in the book. So uh, you can also take it to a nutritionist because mm -hmm. we're, we're most equipped like with the nitty gritty of lifestyle, stress management, nutritional you know, interventions and, and food and supplementation. We are versed. We are trained in that. So that, that second part of the book, you know, if you give it to a nutritionist, they can fly with it. They'll know exactly what to do and customize it for a person and make sure that the supplement, um, I work with very uh, acute doses of certain supplements. So you want to work with somebody, you know, you don't want to just experiment with 30 or 40 options. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's kind of where I see my job is. I need to be the spokesperson for all this, the millions of people that are hurting it's oncogenic, so it can cause cancer, and there's a laundry list of types of cancer uh, it's implicated in autoimmune disorders, laundry list. I mean, it's, it's really, um, the, more I, the more I went for it, the more I found. At a certain point, I stopped looking. So. <laughs> You're like, I'm a believer. <laughs> well, no, because I have to finish the book. But, oh, gotcha, okay. You know, but the, the funniest part was when, um, I had it all, I think I have enough information for people. And then wait a second, I work with Crohn's and I work with uh, you know, IBD and, and ulcerative colitis and I never suspected that I would have anything to do with it. But I just did a little bit of research. And then I found consistent studies showing that about 60% of cases, regardless whether it's Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, may have been initiated by Epstein-Barr. So what? Really? <laughs> yeah. So it's, I think it's really, um, it's really carving into a lot of the complexities along with molds, toxic molds and electromagnetic fields. Mm -hmm. And molds is the only thing I didn't mention in, in the book because that's a different story. But electromagnetic field, um, uh, it's a big chunk of my book. It's a big chapter with a lot of tools because I always teach about that. It's also part of my detox program. So um, I have a specialist on it reviewing my my chapter right now so i'm excited because she's going to give me more hints uh on what information of mine is already obsolete <laughs> and quickly, yeah, so yeah i'm sure this is yeah this is where i see people don't don't uh improve and if you have toxic molds and epstein bar together yeah I have you have both of those yeah if you have electromagnetic field that's a perpetual reactivation Okay. Yeah. We're going to talk more about the triggers. So maybe before we get too deep into it, let's get the basics. What is Epstein-Barr virus? And 
I guess I want to, we, you said that kind of everyone has it, but who, how many people have it in a way that it's affecting their health chronically? Yeah. Uh, if you look at the research, 90, 95% of global population has the virus. And that would be VCA, IgG antibody, probably that's the, the longest standing, you know, you have it uh, all life and it doesn't, it may not mean much. Um, but where it hits people is, well, I call, according to Anthony William, it's what, you know, what is your age and what is the type of EBV that virus that you have? I can't say that based on research. I don't know. But what I can see in research and what I can see in my patients is that <clears throat> you may have it all, all your life and nothing happens. But I'll give you very simple examples from real life when it can really throw you on your back. Um, a young woman is dating uh, a man and they decide that they will get married in two weeks. They're just doing it. They're just going forward and it gets very complicated and stressful. And suddenly uh, she has a uh, very severe mono with actually hepatitis, like acute, oh, you wow. know, and then eventually, and she's young, you know, she wants to have kids and she wants to um, lead her life. And then there is a complication when they suspect multiple sclerosis, but it is, it is, this is a little bit of lesions based on the EBV. Mm. And so, and so uh, the stressors are huge. And I think what I'm seeing more and more over the last years, especially, is that people's life is tighter. The ability to rest and recover from just life is, uh, is shrinking that responsibilities are growing, that a, a woman doesn't have a tribe, there is no division of jobs, she has to do everything, and it's not sustainable, you know? We, there's just no release. And so you have studies on astronaut, astronauts in, in space that reactivate Epstein Barr because of the stress. Mm. <laughs> so You can't escape it by leaving orbit <laughs> <laughs> you know they're not those that stress easily but i think you know so I, i'm thinking that with the uh, uh, with the emotional stress you know uh, of a person in space there's also a stress of uh, circadian rhythm change when the body ha is stressed it has to adjust there's weightlessness oh. when the body has to figure out what's going on so it's also the nitty-gritty physical stress and i see it as lack of street sleep or overwork there are periods in, in people's life when um, they can typically pinpoint when things slided and when they started to really be sick. Um, and, it, and the problem is it doesn't have to look like mono. You know, it's just that's another concept that is a little bit, little bit misleading for doctors. You yeah, have I mono and that's it. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to ask about that. Like, we had another speaker on, uh, Terry Cochran. You may know her. She's working. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and she said that mono is usually like cytomegalovirus and like EBV is like a little different strain. Can you clarify any of that? I don't know if you agree or not with that. I don't have research to val validate any of this cytomegalovirus at all. Uh, the research is very clear when you have mono, you know, if you tested it's right there. It is Epstein Barr. Okay. Okay. Um, but what is mono? When is it mono? What do you? What do we understand as mono? Because in the, in the in the medical community, mono is when you are a teenager, a college student, and oftentimes that happens when you have your so-called in, initial infection of um, of um, Epstein Barr, and that initial infection is called mono. So if and it that's is when you're really tired and like, tell us a little more. And that's when you feel like you have the worst flow you've ever had, which should end in a week or two, or two but it lingers for weeks and weeks. And you feel like a truck running over, you can't pick up. Sometimes you're bedridden. You, you have to take a, a quarter out of your college. You can't study. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have experienced that. And, and, and then if you test it right away, and if you know how to test, I make sure that I have, you know, I have everything explained in the book and I have a freebie on the website and people can kind of see what the testing is and how to understand it. Um, 
But if you test it properly, if you test the right things, you will know exactly what it is. If it's the first one, if it's the initial, or if it's just reactivation. Okay. So some, some kids may have it and it may be very mild. It may be like a little flu and parents don't even remember because they had a good immune system, and, but they already have the virus. Mm. Sometimes kids have virus through umbilical cord, through pregnancy, through birth. You know, they've had it all their lives and it can um, be a problematic all their life. Like people have, kids have tonsil problems. So you can it, get it from your mother. In you can words. get it from your mother. Okay. Yes, it's a kissing disease. So, you know, mothers will um, moisten the, uh, uh, the milk bottle, right? With their mm. saliva. <laughs> saliva has a lot of... Um, Epstein bar and the tonsils are a great entry. So tonsil mm. can con tonsils can host strep infections or um, or EBV. And interestingly, I had one case, and I had never heard of that until that until that time, and never never since then. When um, my patient said that she remembered when she was a little kid and they removed her tonsils, they actually biopsied the tonsils, and they were infected with EBV. Oh wow! And so yeah, so um, so sometimes people carry the antibodies, and they are you know if you have EBV, co-infections are very well established in research with EBV. There's something called transactivation um, when the B cells are already infected with EBV, they they signal differently, and then you know it's like if you have EBV reactivation and you have her herpes simplex at the same time herpes simplex can reactivate as well. Or if you, have, if you have a bad strep infection, which is bacteria, suddenly you can also reactivate EBV along with it. It's like a big party. It's like mm. pulling on each other. So, Because <clears throat> the immune system is weakened, would you say? Is, or is it you feel, yes, or? that's, you know, when, when do you weaken your immune system? When you undersleep, overwork, when you're stressed out. Yeah. Also, emotionally and spiritually, when your stress comes from not being heard, not being loved, not being respected, uh, on the job, professionally, in your family life, having a toxic relationship. You know, all these things affect you, affect your immunity. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, so. With this, yeah, with the, and, and the diet, diet is profound. Diet is profound. <laughs> profound. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wanted to ask a question about the childhood infections because I had read that most of us do get uh, uh, exposed or initially infected even very young. Yes. And oh, so, okay, so we're on the same page. So, so this um, this fall, I'll just give you an example. We moved to another state, and my son was like getting this flu where he would just sleep, like you know, twenty two hours day you know and I started just like I felt like this is could be Epstein-Barr I have Epstein-Barr you know so we took him to a naturopath and I think just because of cost you know we started with just a you know a regular CBC to check his immune system and he he was like improving but I kind of I, I guess my question is like is it important that when you think it might be coming up that you do something about right it initially yes. okay. right away let me give you an example Go ahead. And I ask, I ask my assistant to write it in the story. We're going to put it in the book because it's very, very important. Uh, she was, well, she was, my assistant was helping me with the book, right? Just, you know, with PowerPoint presentation and this and that and a poster. And then she decided to read a little bit more of the book to just get a better sense. And, and then she told me after, after what happened, she told me what happened. And she said, you know, the more I read, the more I was thinking about my niece. She has a two-year-old niece. And doctors are, there's something wrong with her. Doctors are giving some kind of diagnosis. She's falling, for example. And that mm. could be cerebral ataxia oh. when it's actually in your central nervous system in your brain. There's, a, there's a quite, a, quite a few uh, conditions, uh, inflammatory condition related to brain. And, and so she right away called her sister. She had a hunch just based on reading the book. The sister immediately requested that the pediatrician test for EBD and she had it. And then she went through my book, you know, gave her some recipes and told her what to stop. And then, and then the girl, and this is like a couple of days. 
And she says, and she's already doing better. It's like, what? She's already doing better. And, and she then started on what? She started on changing, modulating the food. Oh, some of the stuff in your book. Okay, got it. Uh huh. Okay. Gave her some recipes because you know just just the concept of which foods and and I think also, um, and I think she also uh, read about licorice and they figured droppers, uh, licorice droppers, for her and she's already so what 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 in fact what my assistant did is possibly prevented neurological deterioration, possibly prevented cancer in future, possibly prevented one or more autoimmune conditions if she, when she grows up. It's okay. Profound. It's profound. You want to catch it when it's happening because if you have the right protocols, if you, if you work with the right person, when I, um, let's say I had, a, I had a patient who was struggling with mono and she knew because it was tested, luckily, uh, for a couple of months, she was my old, 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 in terms of time patient. And she came back, like, of course, let's hop on it. We hopped on a very acute, because I have an acute phase, acute protocol. And within a week, she was up and ready to run to her friend's wedding. It's like, slow down. <laughs> True. You, know, you don't, yeah. You don't want to go too uh, crazy, right? It's just getting better. Yeah. If it's, if it's just EBV, it's straightforward. But unfortunately, for most cases, EBV is woven into other problems. So it's like, you have to, you know, it's, it's not the EBV that you're working on. It's, it's all the kind of other things in the way that are also part of the picture. People are complicated. But there are yeah. cases when it's just EBV, like with kids, it's straightforward. Let's just go for it and stall it. Yeah, it just makes me, I mean, I, I can't blame anyone because I didn't know this either. But, you know, just like you said earlier, like I've had two or three instances now where my EBV was dismissed or treated properly. And then when yes. I said to this naturopath, I'm worried about EBV. I mean, I guess I should have insisted, but she was like, well, let's check for anemia and let's do da and, and we did that and it looked okay. And so, and he was feeling better. So I thought, well, you know, and I didn't know the expense of it. So she said, well, I, you know, let's just see if it comes back and then we'll do test again. But I know it didn't sound like that was the right answer well, really there are labs that are direct to consumers and it's going to cost you 150 bucks maybe oh well, that's not bad uh you need to request four markers uh dr Vajdani has a wonderful lab um he also has the best lab for the lyme's disease uh which lab testing. is that uh immuno immunoscience lab okay and he has five markers he 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 tests one additional marker that nobody does and and his lab is very affordable. So in my freebie, for example, I, I give people two websites, uh, requestatest.com, for example, is one. I think uh, Direct Labs Direct is also labs. one. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lifeextension.com, it's free membership and, and uh, affordable labs. So, so really people, people are scared because they don't realize that they can test. They don't need to beg the doctor and twist their arms and and feel resistance and anger from the yeah. doctor and you know i think we have to listen to our instinct because it's i was with my son i felt it and i remember one time i went into the urgent care with a strep throat and i was like i feel like i have epstein Barr again and she's like you can't get it again oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so okay, i mean not... that delayed me for some months you know well i had a woman who was delayed for 17 years because one particular doctor told her exactly how it was and she listened and she just never pursued it. Uh, mm. uh, but you know, um, the, the virus, most of its life lives in the latent stage. The lysing stage is, so what people don't understand is that it has an ability to reactivate at any given moment. And you also have the tools to deactivate it at any even moment, you know? Okay. If you depending how you put things together. Uh, just if you are deficient in nutrients, you can make your viruses more virulent. There we go. Mm. If you have inflammatory meal, fully in, uh, increasing NF kappa B, um, which is very inflammatory, uh, suddenly you can reactivate Epstein Barr because you have a lot more NF kappa B and NF kappa B is hijacked by EBV, it needs it 
to run to mm, run the show. So that's just more an inflammatory marker oh, yeah. that will rise up with oh, yeah. inflammatory foods. Okay. Yeah, it's just foods. Okay. So and there's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, botanicals like turmeric that that decreases um, inflammatory pathways and 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 if kappa beta, for example. So there's just tons of it's all in the book because it's I have botanicals, I have um, nutrients, I have foods. You know, there's there's not as many study because they're not they're not pharmaceutical. So um, I had to pull whatever I could find, but there is enough. And they have profound effects. Just, you know, just the diet and and stress. You can turn it on. Oh, you... you, Go ahead. You have have modulating in your hands. You can do a lot, millions of things. You know, like, for example, working with SIBO is much more complicated because you don't have millions of things you can do for it Mm. that come naturally in your lifestyle. But with with EBV, it's, it's your... You know, it's it's your circadian rhythm, getting enough sleep at the right time, not too much of the blue light at night. Um, you know, it's the diet, it's the rest, it's the spirituality, it's the joy. You know, turning off that stress response, turning on the joy, there's a, and the diet, and then you have uh, therapeutic nutraceuticals. There's, there's a lot. <laughs> That's why the book is so long. There's lots you can do. <laughs> Yeah, I think that is good news. And I I think that's true in in a lot of of these sectors that are really complex. Like I'll sometimes I'll write about something that really helped me and people will say, oh, no, no, this helped me. And I'm like, slow down. Like lots of things can help people. Lots of things can help. Yeah. (laughs) So that that is really good news. So I'd love to dig into more of the botanicals that you found helpful or like superfoods you found helpful. Yes, and this was really this was really great because when I started to work with EBV, um, I had a literature review. I had Vasquez, and I also had Anthony William. And I, I pulled Anthony William's foods because it's hard and much harder. the 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 shorter li- the shortest list in my research that I found related to EBV was foods. Um, nutrients okay. yes nutrients there were quite a few botanicals botanicals there's tons of them that are well researched for antiviral activity but when you look at anti-ebv specifically it shrinks so for mm. for every chapter i have two sub chapters like you know nutrients that are antiviral and nutrients that are anti-ebv specifically because i didn't want to lose sight of antivirals because they may have anti-EBV quality. They just have immune research. Sure. And then the food was the shortest. So I actually, when I started to work with patients on it, I was pulling foods from Anthony William. Um, and did you, I, yeah, I've read his book too, and I, I think it's great. Um, and yeah, I'd be curious if, I, some things I've tried of his maybe weren't as impactful as others, um, but I'm curious which ones like you you feel really excited about from his book from his book um i don't know that it's a with the particular excitement that i had is when i bought his uh healing uh healing foods book and i was reading foods that i grew up with i love i never stopped eating uh, or herbs that i grew up with and i believe in and i almost thought where have you been (laughs) because or potatoes I probably have been the only nutritionist that has not discounted potatoes. I'm a potato girl. I grew up with potatoes, but we cook them in different ways. So they're healthier, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, <laughs> um, I forgot over the years, for example, about red clover tea. I, I used to drink that a lot in Poland for my skin, but it's great for the liver. He claims it's also anti-EBV. I haven't found research. So, you know, um, so I have to be careful with the book because People already have his book, so they have the foods, but I had to really make sure that I validate what I claim so so medical community doesn't go after me. I have to be that bridge. But the direction is antioxidants. Direction is plants, fiber. Direction is fiber recreates your microbiome. You know, you have to, you have to move bowels, you have to move them to decrease your toxic load that's where toxins are excreted mostly so 
you know, yeah. it's just uh, lots of antioxidants, some raw, raw foods like uh, sprouts. Sprouts are loaded if people can tolerate them. And then staying away from GMOs, that's really, that's really important. And staying away from poor fats. I just recommend olive oil and coconut oil if people like that. But you can really get away with those and you don't eat anything else. So um, the big one that people should be careful with is eggs. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit complicated. Um, there is a chapter on it that I wrote and I have all kinds of solutions for it and all kinds of names that may include eggs that people may not be aware of. So there's a lot of, a lot of resources there. Um, no, yeah, there's, tell me more about, is it, it's because many people have like a immune response to eggs. Is that why? Um, I don't want to open a can of worms, okay. but <laughs> okay, no problem. There, there, there may be issues related to how certain vaccinations are harvested and uh, okay. to eggs. Uh, yeah, I have an eggs. egg allergy too. So I just feel like a lot of things you're saying are playing into like, oh, okay. Yeah. That well, you know, for me. I had a patient who was perfectly fine with eggs, you know, no problem. And then she developed EBV, uh, you know, chronic EBV mono and then chronic and reactivations. And then she, uh, you know, she, she took the eggs out. Suddenly she was reactive to them. There, there was a study looking at EBV and actually IgE through allergy to eggs. So there's something, there's something going on. And it's in the book too. You know, okay. I, I don't always have the answers why, how it's all playing in. I'm just looking at research. Okay. But then you look at anecdotal stories from patients. Um, and so sometimes people ask me, you know, at what point can I start eggs? You, well, if you're stable, if you're doing great, test it and see. You know, okay. test it and see how much you can push the boundary and where you can start dipping again, you know? Yeah, and I, I think, you know, we, we talked about sort of the liver and fiber. And I think when people have a condition, it's their natural instinct to be, well, how can I go after it? And some of that probably has to happen, but there are also like supporting the liver, supporting the gut, reducing cortisol, like you said. It is so important. Definitely for me, I see it. I really have to be cautious in my lifestyle and probably everyone has a little different triggers. For me, like traveling is a big trigger. I can't travel too, you know, I can't take a plane or a big trip too often. And maybe it's just you know, getting up too early, staying up too late, that kind of it's, thing. I can, I can tell you exactly how many factors are in it. You have to take spirulina before. You have to uh, request pat down instead of going mm -hmm. through the x-ray machine. Yeah. And, you know, you have a lot more radiation. So your thyroid is air. much more affected in the air. Yeah. Uh, and so spirulina is really wonderful coming that down and and then you know i know i know soy is such a villain in this culture just like potatoes but organic non-gmo miso soup has been used traditionally for decades in japan to to help minimize some of the radiation and so you know if people are okay with that but that but there's there's tools you can use i mean i trained everybody to do pad down and and it makes a big difference i remember i had I had to do tooth x-ray, so I did that. And then a few days later, I was flying. I did pat down as usual, but coming back, uh, we were running late and I literally had to run through and I had to run through the x-ray machine, which I hadn't done in years. And when I, by the time I came home, I, I felt a big knot you know, in my thigh where it took a couple of weeks for things to improve. I had to support it, you know, sleep, because I, I knew it was, it's like Velcro. You know, any radiation. Oh, wow, that's funny. So, the same way. It's just that tipped me over. For like a month. Yes, and that, that's, you know, that's what it is. And oftentimes, one of the residences for Epstein Barr is your thyroid. And hence, you know, much of the incidence of the Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think there's so much tie in. I did a, a summit on mold, and it seemed like half the people who were writing in comments had. Hashimoto. So you just start to see the connections. I'm sure you're seeing it in your office all the time. Yeah. You know, I want to comment on what you said because you, your comment about your lifestyle, how cautious you have to be comes from fear and anxiety. And it's not a positive comment. Hmm. 
and I need you to flip it because um, Rachel, one of my patients, she actually is a, is a very famous health blogger and she actually shared her EBV recovery. This is the one that was running to the wedding. <laughs> uh, on her blog, it became very popular and, she, and we put her in the book um, because she, and I agree with her, I think with our lifestyle, it's not sustainable. And uh, if you have chronic uh, severe EBV, it forces you to really live a more sustainable life. It's a teacher. And you can live a normal life as long as you honor you. And I think yeah. when people get really pushed over the edge and get sick chronically is when for many reasons they push too hard. They have something to prove. Uh, you know, they're 50 years old and they're still looking for approval from the boss and this and spouse because they were never loved. You know, there's so much in our story yeah but i would yeah. flip it in your case i wouldn't say that you have to be cautious i would say this is more normal um yeah i i you're you're totally right i mm -hmm. i could say i'll try to start flipping it for you right now that i have to be selective and i think that that's fine actually being selective because i could go to like a million health conferences <laughs> like you know there's so many always going on but i, I really don't need to go to so many yeah. so you have to just, you have to do what gives you joy. Yeah. And I don't, it's not like I never travel and I just stay home. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, yeah. And I know I'm going to read your book, take your course. Because <laughs> 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 it is a journey. I feel like I've already learned a lot, but there's still probably some pieces oh. that I could learn. Uh, one thing I introduced lately, lately that I wonder if you like or not is uh, olive leaf extract. Oh, this is so interesting. I just wrote a blog, a sh little short blog last night, and we hope to uh, send the newsletter today. Um, and, that, and that is a newsletter, but it's also going to be in, in the blog on both websites. I love it. And you know, in all my stories as a clinician, I've never used it because I used all kinds of other things. And <laughs> so many, yes. There are so many things I've never had to use it. And recently, you know, my, my mom is a retired nurse in Poland and um, she's so much, uh, she's having so much fun researching EBV in Poland because that, it's even worse there. You really don't know much. Um, and so she's been banging on the door. You know, you have to check that olive leaf, you, you do. And so I did. I think a couple of other people told me about it. Um, there is a little bit re of the research and it's really impressive. And the best part is that it has a broad range of antiviral and antimicrobial activity, not just for EBV. So this is especially beneficial when you don't want to over test people. You know, how do you test for strep actually? You know, you, you could, but it's, uh, if you have co-infections along with EBV, um, all that leaf can do a lot. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've taken it over the years just when I have a regular virus and I was again taking it for a virus, you know, like a flu. And then I was like, why don't I just keep taking it? <laughs> See what happens. And I really feel like it, I can tell you know, less of the symptoms are coming up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I didn't really research, but I just messed around with yeah. it. So good to, good to know you. Well, it's research. It's it's been there forever, you know, it's been there forever. Um, I, I don't use herbs as much in the acute protocols and, and because there's so many other things that are so well researched that, that where we have specific research on specific pathways that these, these uh, nutrients um, or supplements go after. Okay. There's, there's so much that I haven't had to use it, but in certain cases, like I had recently, um, there was chemochromatosis also. So we couldn't use vitamin C or L and alpha lipoic acid or this or that. We have to be careful with licorice because that can also maybe improve vitamin C absorption. So with that, you know, there's limitations and then you try different things. And she responded to olive leaf within less than 24 hours. It was like, okay. Um, so yes, I use herbs more in tea version okay. because then when people drink things, they're warm instead of cold water. And they get more minerals through herbs. They have synergistic effect. And there's so many herbs in tea form that you can get. I have a laundry list in the book. And they're also researched for the antiviral activities or anti-EBV. And some of them are antiviral researched, not EBV researched. 
But then Anthony William claims that they're specifically um, going to address EBV2. I don't, I don't claim anything in the book that I couldn't validate in research, so that's fine. Um, so, you know, you have nutraceuticals as a backbone, you have uh, herb teas as an adjunct, and then you have culinary herbs as well. Okay. Like, you know, sage, oregano, um, turmeric, things like ginger, garlic. Okay. This is so awesome. I'm so excited for your book. And <laughs> <laughs> so if I don't, I'll, I'll try to hold this episode back a bit so it's closer to the book, but if people want to get information like before the book comes out, sounds like you have a newsletter that people can join. Tell us more. Yeah, we have a newsletter and uh, you know, I've been so busy, so I haven't wrote one for one and a half months now. But it's loaded. I have a new a new contact for remediation for electromagnetic field. Um, there's a wonderful animal communication, which becomes really important for our life if we have animals. It really really is part of the healing. So I have all kinds of cool cool resources in it. It's free. It's available through my website, uh, the newsletter. So it's always it's always available. I have a split population between the EBV and then SIBO. So I, I, hope, I always hope to address both um, in each newsletter so everybody gets a little bit of interesting information. Okay, so there's just a yeah. button here, join my newsletter, and then there's some freebies people get. It's on my, yeah, on my okay. kashakines.com. Kashakines.com. Yeah. Awesome. So the book, again, will come out, what did you say, July? <sighs> Not sure. We were hoping, we were hoping for May, but we still have to find a, a, a graphic designer now, and then you know we're gonna self-publish it on Amazon because it's okay. faster. Okay. But it's expensive. We have to pay for everything, and so you know it's a question of my budget, <laughs> a question of new team that I can pay for the service, and then my husband took over the publishing part. So there's a lot of components to it. Um, it's going to be really inexpensive. That's our goal. It's going to be in, uh, in PDF as ebook. I think, what is it? Kindle on Amazon. So yeah. it's going to be different varieties. But we also, before the book, which is really important, um, I, I'm just about to start the process of creating it. I have to develop an, an online kind of EBV recovery, basic, pre-recorded online program. It's gonna be based on my detox program that I've run for many years, because that's when I started to see that people were just uh, turning around, and some of them had EBV, and we didn't even know, you know, it's just, that's when I was really uh, starting, I, I started to pay attention to what I was doing. <laughs> In terms of BBV, so it's going to be a wonderful program when you can click and you'll have modules, and it's really to reframe how people live, how they perceive their health, because there's a lot of anxiety and fear, a lot of desperation. We want to recreate a culture, we want to create a positive culture. We have some amazing ideas that will really bring people together. And so, I think with the online program, there's a, a possibility to create an online community. Not so much sharing how terrible things are, but just moving forward and trying positive things and trying different things. So we're working. That's my next project before even the book is done because the book is in the process right now. Yeah, I think um, it's um, you do kind of want those materials ready because people will want more once they get mm -hmm. one taste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're going to yeah, want more. We, and the community is a great idea. I think that's fabulous. Yes, the communities that exist for EBV support are, are wonderful, but they're tough because um, there's a lot of fear, anxiety, and there's also a lot of hope for the best pill that can fix it. And it's really, it really is a teacher, you yes. know, it really, and it, it even has taught me, I have a little antiviral medicine cabinet now, and um, we had last summer when we moved to Seattle, we, it was in the middle of burning forests in uh, British Columbia and also in Washington. 
and literally it felt like you were on Mars. Everything was, you know, the, the red hue, you couldn't see the sky. And, and I had some kind of viral reactivation and it's always around my ear. That's a different story, the way I was born. But uh, dioxin from burning debris and burning forests has been researched as a reactivating factor for EBV mm. and probably other viruses too. And so I would see that the antivirals would really support that. The pain would go away and I would be fine. And, and the beauty of it is that once you figure out, once you learn the antiviral possibilities, then if you have infection in the family, like for example, you can, you can immediately know whether it's viral and bacterial. So my husband went for Christmas and got really sick. Mm. Um, and I started with an antiviral immediately. It's just very high doses of particular nutrients, honestly. Yeah. Which is great because you're, you're doing millions of things with them at the same time. You know, not just antiviral. You're supporting all kinds of things with them. And then within a day or two, I already know I expect to see a shift, and I didn't. And we had to go to the doctor and get on antibiotics. And antibiotics, unfortunately, was what helped him. So it was bacterial. Okay. But if you do, you know, antiviral work, it turns things around pretty fast. So you know that that's viral. So it really becomes like a great home kind of testing remedy. <laughs> um, not just for EBV. Yeah. You know, a lot of viruses have common... common um, pathways that they use and drive. Yeah, I'm sure there's even more viruses we could talk about. We'll yeah. Talk about, talk about yeah. those another time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting. I really appreciate it. Is there anything that we missed talking about that you wanted to include? Uh, I'm sure. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm looking at the list that we were supposed to discuss triggers, activations, reactivation. So people, recovery, is recovery possible? So the concept of recovery. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. I can't say anything can be cured legally, right? But the rec recovery is really when you understand you have your B cells that are infected, they're floating in your body, they're immortalized. Mm. And so they are a factory of new virons. They're just multiplying in the B cells. This is a big part because B cells are your lymphocytes. These are your immune cells. And so that's, this is what drives EBD, chronic latent EBD. It hides in those B cells and then repopulates there using the DNA, creating RNA. So it sits there. And then um, the B cells lose the ability to actually communicate with other immune cells. Say, hey, I'm infected come get me and terminate me. It also loses the ability to ter self-terminate, which we call apoptosis. It can't, so it's immortalized. This is how smart EBV is. So lysing is when you took over, when you were betrayed, when you had divorced, when you lost your loved one, when you lost your job, when you're losing your home, when you can't sleep, you know, and suddenly the cells, the B cells lice, the new virus spill over and you have reactivation. Now the, the active viruses are going after new cells and, and then eventually after a few weeks, they leave the bloodstream and they travel into um, different organ systems, could be central nervous system. Now there's a hypothesis for vagus nerves, uh, vagus nerve and um, fibromyalgia or pain signals and how much of it can be viral actually. So there's, there's a, Central nervous system, inflammation in the brain, uh, thyroid is one, one of the organs, liver, spleen. Liver, spleen are typically the first organs earlier. You know, and sometimes you can get hepatitis, but that will start to terminate later after the acute. So then after the acute mono, people don't realize you can have something called chronic mono. Chronic mono. So that's different than chronic EBV? Well, chronic EBV is, chronic EBV could be a chronic fatigue syndrome, you know? Chronic EBV means that you can reactivate. You can reactivate every week. You can be in reactivation perpetually you know, for a longer period of time, like that chronic mono when it doesn't turn off. The six weeks turns into months. 
and sometimes years, if your status is really poor, really, really poor, diet, sleep, all that. Um, but chronic, chronic can mean, you know, if people do well, they may have reactivation every 15 years or 20. They don't remember last time. Uh, but they can still have autoimmune conditions, uh, different medical conditions that are chronic that have been induced and are perpetuated by the virus. So I'll give you an example. A person who has Shorgans and SIBO and vagus nerve impairment and um, uh, Hashimoto's um, and uh, what else did she have? A lot of stuff. And we clean different things, but we also focused on Epstein Barr. And we were doing also vagus nerve exercises, and she started to stimulate a saliva, and suddenly antibodies for Hashimoto's are dropping. Hmm. You know, typically, when you have autoimmune disorder, it's something that is really attacking the body, and the body has to deal with it 24 7, so it's fighting. It's an overdrive. So, what is the trigger? Where is it? You know, that's typically, unless it's a genetic disorder, which is far more rare than people realize. It is something that is actually triggering that could possibly be removed or depending on the modulation you use in nutraceuticals and herbals or the, the nutrient-based supplements, um, you can stop reactivation, you can stop, you can inhibit um, adherence or penetration or, you know, <laughs> or you can also modulate those unfortunate B cells. Mm. You know, so they stop, uh, like uh, vitamin A, for example, it can uh, stabilize them. And uh, turmeric can actually inhibit, uh, it can actually enhance the, the program cell death of these cells. So you actually kill them so they're not in perpetuation oh. manufacturing those little virons. So in that case, can, it, can the virus be eradicated or is it pretty hard to completely eradicate? <clears throat> I don't know if it can completely be eradicated because I can see, you know, I can see antibodies still elevated in people and they're living their life and they're fully functional and they've learned and they know how to handle it. And, you know, the antibodies become more irrelevant. Yeah. Even though they're flared up. Um, so this is the concept of recovery is, you know, some people say you can only manage EBT. But managing to me is that you're, you're, you're walking on glass, mm. you're managing. But people are living their lives, you know. Some people are just going back to normal life, but they have better lives. They are more conscious of what they do. They're more respectful and they're more loving of what they have, you know, and they change their priorities. And so that's for me is recovery because it's even, it's even better life than they had before and the anxiety drops because now they know the enemy. And <laughs> they, but this is how ingrained fear is. So I have a woman who had, who had chronic and really severe EBV, very painful for 30 years or so. And now after a couple of months, she's living her life and she's moving and she's like, finally, she's just, she's living her life. And then she said, but her pain was very different. It was in the, uh, in the nervous system, it was in the, the muscular, the deeper. And so that level is gone, whatever that means. But out of the blue, and she emailed me later, it was so funny. Out of the blue, she said, I had, oh my gosh, I felt so bad, you know, the lymph nodes and throats. And, and she's not thinking. She completely forgot. <laughs> this is probably a little reactivation from Epstein Barr. Oh, she runs to the doctor because her symptoms were very different. All her life was, you know, excruciating back point, you know, disability and level and, and, and couldn't work and so on and so forth. And so she runs to the doctor. The doctor doesn't find any bacteria infection. It's probably viral, sends her home and he says, viral? Let's open the medicine cabinet and get on the acute anti-EBV. And it's like day one, day two, day three. I just wanted to email you. This is really working. I'm flying again. It's like, oh, you know, people forget. You, you really do get That's the tools. And yeah, it's good to get to the point where you forgot what you were sick with. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. <laughs> No, you just, okay. you I know. Think, yeah, I think that's a, a good explanation for it all. Like, yeah. Sorry. We, I, I, like you said, it, I do think a, a health journey is a transformation. And 
are you going to go back to some of your, you know, habits of mm-hmm. eating chips and watching TV till one in the morning? Well, no, but you found something better in life. So you don't really get to move backwards, but we never get to move backwards. Backwards, yeah. So we always have yes. to move forward. Yes, it's a possibility that when you actually take that journey, it's also self-discovery when you remember what you dreamed about and what's important. And, and, and some people are better to follow their dreams finally because there's a lot of dreamers and they've forgotten. They don't that's follow. A good point. Yeah, that's kind of mm-hmm. something I'm trying to bring into our coaching program is because, you know, get, staying on your protocol can get frustrating sometimes, but it's like, well, hey, you know, what, why are you doing all this? Is it because it, it's not so you can just watch more TV. <laughs> it's like so you can whatever it is, play with your kids more or like write a book or whatever it is. Like, let's have a bigger cause because just getting healthy isn't really the end goal. It's just having a full life. So it's right. It's not, yeah, it's not enough. You have to have something that makes you really happy. And, and I I think for most people, it's really service and it's really making a difference, whatever that means with your gifts. Yeah. 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 But when you're sick, that's not an opening at all. You don't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really appreciate your service to this topic. It's really, it's so wonderful. And I think you're going to help so many people. And I'm excited to get behind you and support the book. And Thank you so sure much. We get it as wide a reach as we can. Thank you so much. And your service is amazing. Um, I had, I'm so sorry I didn't know about it. It's beautiful. So I guess I want to support it too. So I'm sure we're going to talk again and uh, um, further the education because it's needed. And, and thank you for your support and having me here. It means a lot to me. Oh, yeah. Likewise. Let's keep in touch.